Shane, P2, quickest in there, but you did say that you weren't happy with your last run. Can you just run us through that? Was it slippery or anything? Uh, no, we just made some changes after the first one and didn't make the car better, so... But we'll go back to our first run and try and make that better, but um, yeah, all, all pretty good today and first practice was alright, just focus on race stuff and that one tried to find some speed. And the car's obviously been very good this year, does it feel like it's in the same position heading into this weekend, we've got Polly tomorrow? Yep. For yourself, before these guys ask, you've had a lot of travel the last week, any fatigue at all? Oh, like I'm not sleeping perfect yet, but that's part of jet lag, I'm getting better every day, so I'll be fine by tomorrow. And going into tomorrow, is there much change? I guess, do you learn anything from today heading into quality in the morning? Yeah. How important is it here? Yes, qualifying is going to be real important here because the tyre pressures are just stupidly high. So you need to be up front. If you're following, it's going to be super tough to race. You know, I think everyone's going to be in a train just sliding around. So got to try and qualify well. Right, we'll move on. I'll go to Anton for yourself. Happy with today's results? Uh, yeah, it's always good to get through Friday. Um, we'll have a good look at everything tonight, make a couple of changes and uh, hopefully be somewhere at the front tomorrow. And how important, you've had pole here before, you know what it's like to be in the front. We saw you spin around on turn one last year. How important is it getting away to a good start on that Saturday race? Yeah, it'd be it'd pretty important, like Shane said, the, the racing's going to be pretty tough and um, how that new tyre rule and all that pans out, we're not too sure yet, so we'll see that through tomorrow. So during all that, you want to be at the front somewhere, so hopefully that's where we are. And the circuit itself, do you, do you notice any changes from last year? Is there any any spots you need to be careful of? What's, what's the circuit like? Uh, pretty much the exact same, I think. It's, uh, it's cool as, as, as a lot of people out here and it seems like it's going to be a lot over the weekend. So uh, I think the, week, the weekend's going to be a cool, cool event. Um, it's just always good being up in Darwin. And do you hear them from the car? There's a fair few of them around already. Uh, no, the car's pretty loud with all the fans and the cool suits and everything buzzing. So yeah, you can't hear too much. Alright, I'll move on to Andre. Mate, happy with third for that P2 result? Uh, yeah, second, so it's good. Second, my bad. My bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's good. We yeah, had a solid first first session and then improved it a lot then. So, um, yeah, we sort of detuned it halfway through the session and managed to re reroute it to a better overall car at the end. Obviously, it's pretty speedy. So, yeah, some good things picked up. So, um, yeah, but tomorrow's obviously where it matters. How far away is a win for you? You've had some podiums already. It seems like Perth, Winton, you're really starting to put it together. Is the win coming this weekend, do you feel? Oh, who knows? I mean, you can only do your best and hope that that's the result. But um, I think where the car is in the window now is where we haven't had it before, so we're really having to learn. So the race pace, I think, is going to be, you know, something we need to work on if we're able to qualify, you know, up the front. So um, that's sort of where we are at the moment. We're just one step at a time and uh, let the results come. And first year with BJR, but it does seem like week after week you've been improving. You feel like that's. You just said the car's in the window right now. You feel like that's... What do you put it down to, I guess, that as a team, you're getting better and better? Uh, it's lots of things. I think it's clicking a lot more now. The engineering group's working together. We've got the introduction of Phil Keed, who's been really good to help uh, push the whole team uh, to develop and to close loops and to, to move forward. And I think, yeah, we've made tremendous gains um, over the last you know, few rounds. And everyone's just happy and positive momentum with a couple of podiums in the last couple of rounds. So, um, yeah, it's just once things go on a roll in the right direction, it, it, you know, it helps. All right. From that, I'll move on to questions from the journos. Simon? Uh, just for all of you, how much is the high tire pressure sort of affecting your lap times at the moment? Just a feel, start with your shape if you can. I get in trouble if I say my feelings. Okay. They could have, you know, maybe gone up not as high on the tire pressures. I think it's a bit extreme, but they're trying to, I guess, get an extreme result. So I think they're definitely going to get it. So um, no one really knows what's going to happen. We've seen some long runs, and the tire dig is fairly significant. So it's going to impact the strategy. It might even make the race more boring because you can only, you know, pit in a certain window to make the whole race without absolutely blowing your tires up. So yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. It's on. Andre, if the tyre does dig, is it actually, you know, you talked about it taking out strategic um, flexibility, is it also just going to turn into a bit of a tyre conservation race? Could that harm the racing product as well? 
different stages of, of obviously the drop off, and I think it's going to go into the worst stage a lot quicker. So um, you're going to, yeah, at the end of the race, there's going to be a lot of sliding around, people running wide, uh, maybe a bit more action, so we'll have to wait and see. Everyone good? All right, on that, thank you very much, and good luck tomorrow.